Hebrews 10, 19 through 25. I want to begin again where we began. I took the liberty of starting the service by um, taking us to Hebrews 10, 19 as the, the precursor or the, the place to start from. This is how I start prayer every day, from this truth. So it says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So I allow the blood to always be the reason I'm here. Not how well I did yesterday, not how bad I did last night. It's just Jesus and the completion of his cleansing, liberty, freedom. And I come through the new and living way. I'm not going into a temple made by hands. I'm not trying to get into something made by man. I'm walking into the holiest of holies inside of heaven through the veil of Jesus' flesh, the new living, his death, his re- burial, his resurrection, his ascension, now his high priestly intercession. I step, I step knowing this is, this is the person to whom I come through. He is the one who appears before God over me. And then there he is. First thing you find when you come into the glory, into the presence, is Jesus, our high priest, over the house of God. And we're his house. So we literally can start as as quick as it takes just to say those words. Now, I'll be honest, sometimes it takes me an hour to convince my soul that's true. But it doesn't make it that it wasn't true for the first 59 minutes. It's just I had to renew my mind and realign and submit back to truth and come back into that agreement. So we did that, and that's why we were engaging our praise. Because once you're there, it's to draw near. I'm doing this, <clears throat> a lot of this came uh, as the Lord just unpacked yesterday in my walk with him. My desire, whenever we get close to Yom Kippur, which will be start this evening, uh, Tuesday evening, go through uh, Wednesday until sundown, is to really honor Jesus Christ. Because this is his day job now. Or 24-7 job, I should say. He is our high priest. And everything that was first seen, Moses saw as he saw in heaven, the tabernacle. Jesus actually went into that tabernacle, cleansed it, and set himself after he was given by God and over, sworn with an oath that he would be Melchizedek, the high priest of our... <laughs> He then went and began to do business, and he does it continually. It says he ever lives to make intercession. So there's so much that, again, for us evangelical, charismatic, Protestants, Pentecostals, priesthood doesn't mean a lot. Maybe the closest we might think of is the Pope. But in Israel, the priesthood was everything. Once you got the slaves out of Egypt and you wanted to create a nation for yourself, you set up a tabernacle and a priesthood so there could be an, a, a God-abiding relationship dwelling in the midst of his people. Now, once Jesus was raised from the dead, called to be son, he was then made to be a high priest. He was, he, God said, I swear to you, you are a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is a Hebrew word means uh, my king of righteousness. And in God declaring Jesus to be his king of righteousness, we certainly declare him to be our king of righteousness. So anyway, I really just, I cherish, I cherish the ability to, no matter what state I'm in, no matter what state my life is in or what state other people's lives are in, to just come fully into that place and connect and worship and draw near. And when you draw near, what happens is your heart starts to get connected in the true place that Jesus is holding for us. And your conscience gets freer than it was when you began by faith. You start having an experiential moment inside of the sprinkling and you go, whoa, I do feel good. I do feel loved. I do feel accepted. I am ringing, but I'll get over that. Right? Right, Petey? 
I am ringing. <laughs> I just make sure. Sometimes you hear it up here more than you hear it out there. You hear it too? Okay, we all have confirmation. We're hearing a ring. Are you hearing that online too? <laughs> Probably. All right. So our hearts are sprinkled and we start feeling it. Conscience is an interesting word. Conscience is dual knowledge. It means it's what you know about yourself that you know God also knows about you. It's the hidden things. It's what you see when you look at yourself in the mirror. It's, it's a dual knowledge. It's an awareness of the secrets of who we are. And, and our conscience starts getting cleansed. Oh, it's just, we were meant to live with a free conscience, a good conscience, a clean conscience, a healed conscience. And our bodies are washed with pure water. So something supernatural starts empowering us, sanctifying us. We start in, accepting the fact that we're ready to go. Let's do it. And once we're there, and that can take a worship service, that can take an hour, that can take a few minutes. Here is where praise erupts because we can do nothing but thank the Lord for who he is, what he's done, who Jesus is, what God is accomplishing. And it just... Um, do you guys want me to go to the handheld mic? Would that be easier? No? Yes. Some of you out, shout out loud. Just keep talking. Shut up, Steve. Just keep talking. All right. Don't talk to the sound men and women. So there you are. And you start engaging in that. And man, only Jesus could do what Jesus did. And none of us could ever do what he did. And none of us can ever repeat what he did. And only Jesus was raised from the dead as the firstborn of many brethren. And only Jesus was given the high priesthood by an oath to ever live to make intercession to appear in God's presence for us. Only Jesus could do that. And when we acknowledge that and step into what he accomplished, then everything recollects we come completely back to perfect no matter where we were no matter what we did no matter what we did five seconds ago we come back to perfect and there we are aligned and there we are washed and there we are free and then the first thing you will notice is that your confession of hope is you recognize boy i really need this you just don't want to be in the presence of God without a confession of hope. What's a confession of hope? It's all the things Jesus ever said to us. All the truth, the promises, the beautiful things we read in our Bible, words we've heard, things that caught our attention, that meant, to, made us underline our Bible, made us expect something more than just the words we read. That's the hope that comes. Whenever God speaks, faith and hope comes immediately. And then faith has to hold its place in patience as hope can tear, carries us through life. Our faith is in God's ability. Our hope is in the promise he gave. And we just carry forward. And when we bring that to the Lord, I don't think there's anything more pleasing to God, the Father, than to hear, whoa, <laughs> now that was good. Can you do that on, can we work that one? I, I would get that down. There's some times I could use that. <laughs> <laughs> that confession of hope that like allows us to just let the sound of, you said these things to me 20 years ago 40 years ago 20 minutes ago and I believe them to be true my life doesn't look like it but your word is truth I honor you it's a confession of hope it's hope came from me hearing you speak Hope started me on a pilgrimage, on a journey. I bet every one of us, if we took time, you'd realize there's some things that have happened inside of us that we heard the Lord that started us on a pilgrimage. Started us, made, we made certain decisions and we set ourselves in certain courses. And now we probably all anticipated they would immediately transform into something. And now years have gone by and it hasn't really yet happened the way we saw it or heard it. Now, those confession, that confession of hope means so much to Father because what we're saying 
is if we don't, if we hold it fast and we don't waver, it's right, we're holding it down. Literally means to hold something down. Think of a, an umbrella on the beach. It's shading you in a hot, sunny summer day and the wind picks up. You ever had one of those bell, umbrellas? Just go, like dangerous spears flying through the sky for someone on the other side of the wind. But yet you're holding it down. I want this in place. There's, there's opposition to this confession, but I'm holding it fast. And why I'm not, it says here, it says, without wavering. The word waver is like a fence that's teetering. It's leaning. Anybody have a fence? I have one, one of my fences in my backyard. It's just kind of like, just, just there. Don't let your confession just kind of be there. It's intentional. It's held. It's in place. Because he who promised is faithful. When, when you and I hold a confession that we, we've heard God say that is releasing hope, that gave us hope when we first heard it, man, it's pleasing. Let us consider one another to love and good works. The word consider is to observe fully. Inside of the body, when the body comes alive in the presence of God, the next thing we begin to look outside and we see the body functioning as the many, many, many members, the multiple member body. And we begin to say, hey, I want to I wanna see the love of God flow. And I'm going to bring the love of God where I go. And I'm going to activate the love of God in the midst of one another. And we're going to do that at the end of the service today to honor the Lord. And we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some. Why is that? Because when we were saved, wherever we were saved from, we heard the voice of God and we started a journey, which means we were called out of a place that we were found in to follow the Lord into the place that we are called to be. The word church means to be called out. The church is called out of wherever we were and we're all being collected together. That's where the word assembly is. The word assembly literally means to the, the complete collection the complete collection. It's, it's only used one other time in the New Testament, and it's in Thessalonians. And I love the way it's used there because you can really appreciate the value of the assembly. Let me find that. No, oh, I can't find it. I'll find it later. <laughs> the collection of the saints and the coming of our Lord is what it says. The, the gathering of the saints, the coming of the Lord. It speaks of the, of the rapture, of the completion of the church being brought together, both heaven and earth. So we're being fully collected together and we're to exhort one another, which means you pull in a huddle like a football team trying to sort out how do we get to the next, make the yardage. We huddle. So we're called out of wherever we were and we're finding ourselves into a family by the, by the determination of God collecting us together, the full collection. And when we come together, we get intentional to exhort one another, which is to draw one another close. So you just get the picture. We're all coming in to a cube. We're going to look like the new Jerusalem city soon. And we're to do this even more as we see the day approaching. So, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, we were praying as we do on Wednesday, Wednesdays at 4 to 5.30. And Diana began praying that prayer about being, provoking, you know, uh, stirring one another up to love and good works. And I felt the Holy Spirit so strong coming about the love that he wants to release through his body and through one another and by one, you know, from the head. And I just started... Scripture upon scripture upon scripture. So it just coming and coming and coming. And I just filled a notebook full of, of, of what I saw supernaturally happening. But what was the beauty of it was all coming from the head. It was not, a, was not originating from the body. It was originating from the directive of the head. As we grow up into him who is the head, then we are able to minister what we are, have of the Holy Spirit one to another. And so... Then last week I was all excited because I was looking forward to teaching 
about the, this, this dynamic of, the, of life flowing from the head to one another through the body. And then, as soon as I get into the message, the Lord, I feel the Lord keeps saying, but no one will listen to you unless they first see me as the head. Jesus was saying to me, no one's going to listen to your exhortation of how love's going to flow so freely unless they submit themselves to me, the head. And, they, and it isn't like the submission, oh, you don't believe in Jesus. It's like where we don't allow Jesus to be the all-sufficiency, the all-providing, the one who is the answer to everything, who is everything, who is, fills all in all. Because if he is the head and we are his body, he is the, we are the fullness of him who fills all in all. So he's the filling us. Anyway, so I got on this whole message on Jesus the head. And now today, I'm wanting to activate the love of God. But I have to give us a moment to let the high priest make us completely blessed. Because if we're not completely blessed in the high priest, we'll always be needy. That's good. And if we're needy, we'll never feel love. Because love is not attracted to need. That surprised me too when I heard it. The Lord said, you know, love is not attracted to neediness. And I thought, I know that. I know that experientially. But why, what does that mean in the scripture? He says, no, love is attracted to obedience. And then I thought, well, how do you mean by that? And then he took me to John 10. This is all in my car driving, of course. He says, Jesus said, for this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life for the sheep. But then he says, in the same context, nobody takes my life from me. So I lay down my life. I'm not having it taken from me. I'm in obedience to the Father's wishes, and my obedience to the Father is how love is, really, is, is, is is experienced. I'm experiencing God's love for me as I lay down my life. John 14 says the same thing, that when we value his word, and the word is precious to us, and we keep it, that's proving love to the Father. The Father goes, I love these people because they just, they, I can say something to them and they just won't let it go. Even though testing comes and trials come, even though offense comes, they just hold on my word. I love, I want to be with these people. And that's what Jesus said, we'll come and make our home with you because you keep my word. And the Holy Spirit comes to help us keep his word. So he's telling me, love is attracted to obedience. And then we go to Jesus initiating the greatest, the new commandment as the leader of a movement and as the head of a body, he initiated before he left the planet a new commandment. It's found in John 14, John 13, and John 15. Three times he repeats it. First John, he says, this is the commandment, my new commandment I make to you. As I have loved you, love me. So now Jesus said, the way I've loved, I want you to love. But again, here's the good news. Unless I get loved by Jesus, I can't love like Jesus. Do you understand? You, do you understand? Love is from the head. You cannot, we, we want to love, but we can't love unless we've been loved. And we want to be loved, and we're looking all around in the wrong places. Right? How many got married to find love? Now, that isn't where you find love. Hopefully you can find a way to love, and your spouse can begin to love you. But if you don't do it as for the Lord, you're probably going to have a deficit. Because love just doesn't come from each other. Love comes from God. God is love. Yeah. Come on, don't look at me like you're going. <laughs> Come on, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. God is love. Say that with me. God is love. <laughs> and we love because he first loved us. Yes. So would it stand to reason that if I am lacking in the love flow toward one another or anyone, it's not because the other person is no longer deserving. It's because I'm no longer obtaining. I'm not, I'm not connecting to the love. You see, Jesus said, no man takes my life from me. So evidently, he could have gone through as a victim. 
But he wasn't ever a victim. He was victorious from the day he was born. To the day he said yes to the father at the bar mitzvah. That you are my father and I'll follow you by faith. And I'll live in union and communion with you. He never. What would he do? He would go and be with the father every morning. Father, I love you so much. I am your son. I am well pleasing in your sight. You have spoken that I am the Lord. I am to be the Lord. I am savior to die in the place of the mankind's sin. I just fellowship with you in this place that you've made me to be. He would, he literally would carry his confession of hope to the Father and have communion. And, and in that, he would feel the love of Father. He would feel the affirmation. He would feel the joy and the pleasure that Papa has for him. This is what all prayer is all about. That's what prayer does. If you, if you connect, if you hit that sweet spot, that's how you'll feel. You'll feel like, wow, I am wonderfully valued. Now, the beauty of our life is we don't have to live sinless. Somebody already did that for us. We have to live in faith that Jesus' sacrifice was sufficient, which is returning mankind back to the original plan, which is man was to be dependent upon God. We're always to be dependent upon God. What do you need right now? Money, healing, deliverance, love. Whatever you need is in Jesus. And if we turn as a people and go, I need, I need to have a new experience in the love of God. I need to have a healing from the experiencing Jesus and his resurrected healing. I need to be delivered from the abuse and the confusion. I need a tear wipe from my eyes. If I go to Jesus and always go to Jesus, then because I'm going to Jesus, next thing you know, he's, in, he's moving his body freely from the head. And we can then, what we have, we can begin to give it away. And we begin to give away what we have. We begin to receive more from the head. And, and yeah, yeah, there's so many times the body releases the, the anointing of Jesus to one another. But this matured church that's growing up on the earth, that's coming alive, is, a re- is, is, is intense about Jesus. Could you imagine walking around a body without a head? Could you imagine any of us living in a relationship inside a church without recognizing Jesus as all-sufficient and supreme and Lord and King and source of everything? It's, what happens is the body gets into dysfunction. We call it autoimmune in the natural. body goes through so much trauma, it starts to fight it, kill itself. Shoot, go after good things when they think it's bad things. Or cancer, when a cell begins to have its own way and wants to live its own life and do its own thing, that's cancer. Unsubmitted. But it isn't to people. People is, people is when God says to do so. But, uh, but it's to every man grows up into him who is the head. And oh, when we grow up there. So, if I, Jesus would say, I, no one's taking my life from me. Every morning I get up, I come, I, I spend time with my Father until we are fully one. And in the oneness, then I go and lay down my life unto him for the, whoever I'm about to meet. That's what I'm going to do all my life until the end. And if, if I feel like my life is being taken from me, I have to back out of the situation and back into my God and say, Daddy, renew me, recover me, restore me, free me, bless me, help me again so I can go give away life. I had this picture, and then we're going to pray. I had this picture. You know, we all like bottles, and we come, and this one has just a little, little of water left. Now, if I drink a lot of it, there'll be less water. Now, let's just think of us as a bunch of bottles coming to church. And... The more we give away, the more we can receive. Right? And, and if I was to take a pitcher and pour water, and if I was a good aim and the water went into the bottle, it would still only fill up to the top. And if I kept pouring it, it would just spill over. So it, part of our goal is to give away everything we have. So that we can receive more. Part of our desire is to come up into the head. See, here's I'm, we're cha- the Lord wants to renew our mindset, to transform our thinking. We want to, we want to come as full as we can be, 
We want to pour out as much as we can to receive a new impartation so we can pour out more again. And we want to get that cycle going. Now, for all of us, we will go into these moments where we get taken advantage of, offended, hurt. And, and what we find is it's just safer to keep the bottle sitting there and just kind of, at least I know the water isn't still there when I need it. But the problem is that that's not how life flows in the kingdom. Because we're meant to always be living from a dependency, always living from a living flow of Jesus. And all of life comes from Jesus, from the glory, from his head. And when we release that, so we, so in one way, we want to come to church full, ready to give God all praise, to release love, to see love and awaken love and to provoke love. And you don't provoke love by telling, I need you to love me. There's no place in the scripture you'll find where you are able to command someone to love you. You will find throughout the scripture you're commanded to love. So again, trouble is whenever I want to find love, I got to go love. Whenever I want to come out of poverty, I got to go give money. Whenever I want to get out of a funk, I got to get, go give someone a help. Whenever I want to get out of a curse, I got to start blessing. Whenever I want to get, uh, if I want to get out of being sick, I got to start praying for someone to be healed. It's like release, get the flow going. And when the flow gets going, the next thing you know, we're in the middle of it and we're starting to come back up and alive. Now, think about this. We come full, best we can. First thing I got to do is I got to love Jesus. I'm in a company. I am in assembly. I am in a practice run for the great assembly of the saints. And I want to praise him. I want to make sure he gets all my praise. So I tell my body, I don't care how you feel. And my soul will deal with you later. Give God some real praise. Enter in fully. Acknowledge Jesus completely. Then draw near with the true heart. Let's be honest. Let's be in the moment. Let's let God get a hold of us. And then get that confession back up. Hold it up in front of the Lord because he is worthy of everything he's ever said because he's faithful. And that takes something out of us. It gives something to us. And then we look around and go, who can I bless? 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 If you come to church saying, who can I bless? You will be more blessed by the time you leave than if you come to church hoping someone blesses you. It's just the nature of the kingdom. You have to give it out. It has to flow. It has to come from the head out for the head to bring more. It's like, how can I release what I've been given? How can I bless somebody? And in Ephesians chapter 3, At the end of this great teaching that Paul does over all that was accomplished through Jesus Christ and who we are in Christ, in verse 14, he closes with his powerful prayer, which we can pray. And we're going to pray in a moment, I pray, I believe. So imagine the Apostle Paul. And he has been expounding on the beauty of the of the resurrection, of the completed Christ, of the victory that we have. And he says, now, I, for this reason, Ephesians 3, 14, for this reason, I bow my knee. For, for this reason, everything I've just said, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. So Paul is reaching up to ask the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he would, according to the riches of his glory, and the glory today is found in the face of Jesus, so we know where the source is coming, just like all of our needs are met according to his riches in glory in Christ. We know the reason for this beautiful, benevolent, generous, kind, over-the-top good response to every one of us every time whenever we pray is because of Jesus. We ask the Father, and Father says, I would love to because of my son. I would love to do that for you because of my son. Yeah, no problem. I want to do that. Now, he's saying, I want that from this riches of his glory, he, we would be strengthened with might 
through his spirit and the inner man. That's about every power word in the New Testament found in that verse. Strengthened with might through his spirit and the inner man. Okay, so picture that. Now, from the riches of his glory, my, I am receiving from, by the Holy Spirit, he's bringing to me might, power, in my inner man. Not my outer man. The inner man. I let my inner man come alive. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So Christ, we all say that. Where's Christ? He's in my heart. Have you received Jesus? Do you believe he's in your heart? Yes. But, but to have the, 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 the vibrancy of it, to have the joyful dwelling and experience of it is going to have to have a power source. We're going to have to have a connection. It's like Wi-Fi. You know, can you imagine watching Netflix without Wi-Fi? You're just going to be staring at an end. You have to have the connection to have the experience. Now here we go. Oh, through faith. He's, and, and that I be rooted and grounded in love. So there is no... If, if, whenever I need love, I go to God. Because he will be the source of love that I need to experience for it to then flow out of me to release others. He's the source. That I might be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, length, depth, and height. So all the love that we need to know about God is accessible through a glory experience of power coming to us, strengthening us with my inner inner man, Christ dwelling in our heart by faith, finding ourselves rooted inside of love. And then this love starts to envelop us as though it was more than soil. It was like the Pacific Ocean and we're in the middle of it. And then we know this love, which is beyond knowing it. It's like you can never know it all in one moment. It's just beyond whatever you've known. It's just another knowing, another experience. That we can be filled with all the fullness of God. So Paul is praying this prayer over all of us so that we might have this experience. Because when we are full of the fullness of God, now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. So now we're talking about prayers to start just going boom, 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 boom. Because we're in a fullness of God. And we know that, well, this is, he can do more than any of this. He can go beyond this. He can do anything we can. He can go beyond I can ask. He can go beyond I imagine. I'll tell you this. This Lord started saying this this morning. I don't like it when he says things like this, but it's true. So I'll say it. He says, you're as big as your prayer life. You're as big as your prayer life. What are you praying for? That's how large you are. You got to, because... Oh, God. If you watch, you, you, God will get us to extend ourselves, to pray for Jerusalem, for Israel, to pray for California, to pray for our nations. But if we do, then we will be growing into that, and we'll be warred over that. And if we retreat from that, we'll find no pleasure, because God never wants us to retreat from our prayer. We may have to hold ourselves in patience. We have to live in long suffering. But we, we're supposed to anticipate what, we initi- what God initiated, he would complete. So we have to then live in our prayer life that's way beyond the one we can sustain. Does that make sense? You're as big as your prayer life. And if your, life, if your prayer life has gotten smaller than the life it was once, it's not the life it's to be. It's supposed to be reignited back to the level that was when you had vision, when you had hope. And that's what happens. You get full of the fullness of God. You go, God can do anything. I'm going to ask something extraordinary. I'm going to go way beyond. To him now becomes glory in the church. The called out ones by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Is that cool? All that happened because Paul says, when I bowed my knees to pray to the Father... Of all the families, heaven and earth, from the riches of glory, he begins by Holy Spirit to send power that gets inside the inner man of each of the body members. They become strengthened. Christ dwells in their heart by faith. They're found themselves rooted and grounded in love. That love experience goes exponentially until it becomes an ocean of depth, height, width, and perceptions. And then there's a fullness that follows because of the immersion in the love and the next thing you know there's a capacity to pray way beyond where they've been living and now their prayers extend and next thing you know there is glory all over the church through Jesus Christ now here's a here's my little exercise I want us to take 10 minutes 
Maybe not that. Maybe won't have to take that long. And to pray this prayer for somebody. Purposefully. In the, in the, so we'll pair up in twos. And you can pray, pray with anybody you like. But we'll take a moment and grab your Bible. It's Ephesians 3, 14 through 20, uh, 21. And just pray. And it's a beautiful thing about this is that it's really easy to make it into your prayer. Uh, for this reason, Father, I bow my knees to you. And you're the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you, the, you're the whole family of the earth is born and named. And I want you to now fill and then pray for that person. Does that make sense? Yeah. Would you be willing to try that see if it worked? Yeah. Let's see if it works. Let's just see it. Why don't we just try it? So pair up. And I'm going to pray for everybody online when we do this. Uh, and just pair up. It, uh, it, you're going to do, we're just going to kind of pray the prayer of Paul into, for the other person out loud. And be the conduit for the Holy Spirit. Touch them by the hand or someplace. And then after you've prayed that prayer and released it, then they'll pray that prayer to you and release it. Let's stand up. It'll make it easier. We're all standing, then we can kind of move and feel like we're doing out of listening mode. It's, go find somebody, anybody. You can be your husband, you can be your wife. But let's everybody pray. This is a safe prayer. It's in the Bible. We can't go wrong here. And we're going to pray for one person. And Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Let's just keep finding somebody. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you. And I want to pray for everyone online now. For this reason. For all that we've learned about Jesus Christ, the head, the good, generous, high priest of our confession, I pray for you for this reason. That the God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. the whole family is named under him, and we're a part of the family that pray for you. That according to the riches of his glory, the magnitude of his might, power, the dominion, the delight of who he is, according to the riches of his glory, you would be strengthened. You'd be strengthened with might through His Spirit. Right now, Holy Spirit, bring the strength of the might of the glory of God, riches of the glory, into the inner man of my brother and my sister. There, receive. Here He comes with might. Might. Supernatural might. All that you need to live vibrantly and victoriously inside your inner man. There, yes, your inner man, not your outer man. He's coming to the inward man, the one inside, the heart. The Christ would dwell there in your heart by faith. You will, there. Be aware now of Jesus dwelling in your heart. Be aware. Make it intentional to be aware. Jesus is dwelling in my heart by faith. And he is strengthening me with might. And I bless you that not only are you being strengthened with might, there is a rooting of your life. Your entire life is rooted in the love of God that he has for you. That he loves you. That he laid down his life for you. That God so loved you that he sent his only begotten son. You are loved. And his love is sufficient. Thank you, Jesus. Receive. Let that love now grow. That God would open the door for you to flow into the vastness of his love. The width, the length, the depth, the height. And to know, to experience this love that is beyond any experience we can ever have. Go ahead. Let love flow. Love is being poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That's the way he works this. It is real. It's true. We are in the vastness of love and in that knowing, that experience of love. I bless you. I bless you. Just receive. 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 Receive his love. Receive. Receive. Let his love pour into your heart by the Holy Spirit. Receive. Receive. Receive his love. 
There his love flows. There his love grows. There his love never stops. There his love continues. And let the fullness of God fill you. The fullness. There you are. You are going to live in fullness now. You, it's all from the head. It's because of Jesus Christ. You're going to live in the fullness. The fullness. The fullness. The fullness. Oh. Now, I bless you with the knowledge that, and the knowing inside that the Father is able to do way beyond what I've just prayed and way beyond whatever we can pray, exceedingly abundantly. And I activate your prayer life back to the level it was called to live from. I awaken the, char the charges God has given you to pray over nations and people or, or to pray for family, friends. I awaken uh, the, the charge to know that God is extravagant in his miraculous power and his goodness and he's going to break through the circumstances of life. He's a healer, a deliverer, a redeemer. He's a revivalist. He is a restorer of the streets to dwell in. He raises generations. He calls them from captivity and people that have been taken captive. He says, I can bring them back. He's awakening hope alive and prayer alive and he's doing it again in you. Because you are the one who prays, whom God answers, hears, because of the union that you're in with Christ, that then creates a glory experience, a glory experience, a glory experience in the church that brings glory to the Father. I call you to come up alive, come up alive, come up alive. Whoa, Shabbat Handalam now everybody that's praying and if you're listening to the prayer, you probably will start hearing truths. That's where it come, stuff starts coming alive. Let it, let it ring. Prophesy, promise, declare blessing. It's, it's the beauty of, of the Spirit of God is that He starts growing the sound that we start obeying. If we submit to the Word, then the Word grows in its scope and sequence. Other scriptures come alive and so forth. So I'm going to release a blessing before we go to prayer for the nations. So, Heavenly Father, everyone online, everyone in the house, I declare and decree that as you have made a place for us to approach you with all boldness, confidence, and assurance into the Holy of Holies, as you have made a place for us to draw near with a true heart, as you have brought us into a place that we carry a confession of hope in our communion with you, that is more than just uh, a wishful thinking, but it is a promise made by a faithful God. I declare that this promise of a faithful God releases Spirit, Holy Spirit, into every member of the body, and the body starts surging with life because the head is releasing life into the body, and the body is receiving Christ dwelling by faith, and the faith that's coming alive is awakening the love of God to be rooted and the ocean of the love of God to be experienced and the fullness of God to be filled in. And every member, every member is coming alive because the head is releasing the sound and the voice of the members of the body are echoing the sound of the head of Jesus Christ. And I declare that that is growing until we are so loved, so and filled with the Holy Spirit. We're overflowing everywhere we go. We're giving away everything we have. So I release healing in the body. I release miracles in the body. I release sounds of deliverance in the body. I release answered prayers that have been held back for whatever reason. They break open and they're free. I release souls that have been captive. I release those who have been held captive by a stronger one to be released from the evil one. I declare there is breakthrough. There is healing. There is deliverance. I declare the reproach comes off of the body. The so sorrow leaves. The tears leave. But there comes a joy, a joy, a joy of breaking out. Because the whole, the body is receiving from the head, the victorious triumphant head, Jesus Christ. I bless the body to live and receive and respond and come alive in every way. Even now, Father, let it be, let it multiply in every way. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.